So if you're anything like me, you've probably been binge watching a whole bunch of Netflix during your coronavirus lockdown. And one of those shows that I binge watched, as I think many others have based on the people that I've talked to, is The Ozarks, right? And in, uh, in this show, the main character, Marty, uh, he's a money launderer for the Mexican drug cartel. And there's a few scenes uh, in the show where they're talking about, you know, opening Panamanian companies, and Panamanian bank accounts and you know moving money through them through these shell companies and all this stuff and you know he's doing all this remotely from the Ozarks you know uh, not obviously not going to Panama in person to set this up and it just dawned on me how unrealistic TV is and how many people actually believe that it's still that way, right? That you can actually do what, you know, Marty is doing um, and, you know, set up foreign companies and foreign bank accounts and, you know, maybe not money, maybe not launder money for, for drug cartels, but at least, you know, maybe evade some taxes doing it and you're not gonna get caught. Wrong. So, you know, as with a lot of things, TV is not always completely accurate, right? It makes for great TV that Marty's, you know, sitting there in the Ozarks with his laptop, opening up Panamanian companies. I think even his kid, like on one episode, opened up some Panamanian companies and laundered some money um, and opened up Panamanian bank accounts. Uh, it's just not realistic uh, to one, do that, and two, to not get caught, right? Because they, you know, they have all these people after him, um, but, you know, the FBI can't nail down like what he's done wrong, right? Uh, and that just wouldn't be the case in, in the real world today. They'd know in a second what he was doing, right? And it just got me thinking about how often I'll have some, you know, potential client call and, uh, you know, say, hey, you know, I want to open up like an offshore account or an offshore company. And, you know, they want to use it for, for, evading taxes. Now, obviously, I wouldn't help him do that, uh, but it's not even really possible to do it and evade taxes uh, in, in, in today's data-driven compliance world, right? So, first of all, you probably could open a foreign corporation uh, remotely, right? Um, but you're going to have to provide whoever's going to open that company for you with a lot of due diligence, right? They're gonna to wanna to see a passport, they're gonna to wanna to see like a utility bill or, or a bank statement in your name, they're gonna want a reference letter from a lawyer, maybe even from a bank, they're gonna to wanna to see the, these things, you know, these copies of these things that you're sending them, like your passport, utility bill and stuff notarized. So, you know, if if you wanted a lot of money, you're gonna need a fall guy, right? You can't like do this yourself. You can't just anonymously say, yo, I want a company and set it up. It doesn't work like that. Um, you have to provide them a bunch of information, right? So if the government suspected that this company was laundering money, they could go see the registered agent is. The registered agent would have this information on who set it up. Boom, that dude's in jail. Uh, but probably the bigger issue uh, that is, is very unrealistic is the fact that they're like laundering money through these Panamanian bank accounts, right? Marty's an American. He lives in America. Um, which means that any bank accounts that he's signing on in Panama, and obviously, you know, in the show, they don't say who's signing on the bank accounts, but somebody's got to sign on the bank account, right? And if it's an American, uh, signing on that bank account is going to mean FATCA reporting, meaning that the U.S., uh, meaning that Panama, the Panamanian banks, are going to be sending every year to the United States how much money is in the bank account that this American's signing on, you know, who's signing on it, and, and a bunch of other information. So, you know, if they wanted to catch Marty, they don't even have to investigate him. Through the FATCA report, they're gonna say, yo, Marty signs on this account, which they know money laundering is going through, boom, Marty goes to jail, right? Um, and so the US has basically set itself up that Americans, for whatever reason, whether legitimate or illegitimate, you cannot have foreign assets or bank accounts without the US government knowing about it, right? Because if you sign on a foreign bank account, it doesn't have to be in your name, 
you just have to sign on it, right? So it could be in the name of a company. That's getting reported to the U.S. Uh, the U.S. is going to know what you're signing on overseas, right? Um, and then it's really easy to, to, to find out. Like, okay, you sign on, on this company's account for ABC Company. Well, what's your relationship to this ABC Company, right? Then they can go look and see, okay, who's the registered agent for this? They can go find out who owns it, get the paperwork, they find out you're behind it. And so the, what's happened is the, the U.S. has a bunch of reporting requirements that you need to report if you have foreign income or assets, right? So if you own part of a foreign entity, there's, there, you know, depending on what percentage of it you own, there's going to be forms you got to file, right? If it's a foreign corporation, you're going to have to file a 5471. If it's a foreign partnership, an 8865, a foreign disaggregated entity, an 8858, you're going to have to file an FBAR to report the foreign financial accounts that you sign on. So like those foreign bank accounts in the name of the company that you might sign on. Um, uh, possibly do your own FATCA reporting under, you know, Form 8938, depending on the value um, of the assets that you that you have overseas. And if you don't file this stuff, it's really easy for the IRS to find out that you have it via all this FATCA reporting, right? And if they catch you and you haven't filed this stuff, the penalties are going to be astronomical, right? Like some of these forms have penalties of like ten thousand dollars a month. Other ones are 50% of the, the, the balance of your bank account. So if you have any foreign stuff, forget about, you know, trying to do things in secret over, o, o, overseas. You can do it in secret overseas and keep it, you know, confidential and private from prying eyes of like, you know, people who might want to sue you or something like that. Um, and, and, you know, potential litigants, you know, things like that. But you're not keeping a secret from the government. They know. Uh, so the point being is don't be deceived by what you see on TV because it's just completely not real, right? Like it may be in the 80s it used to be real where you could go fly on a private jet with, you know, cases of money to the Cayman Islands and put it in a bank with no questions asked. But those days are long gone, right? There's no more numbered accounts and all this stuff. So the point being, don't do anything illegitimate to begin with. Uh, if you're going to do something legitimate overseas, make sure you plan it properly. Make sure you report it properly because even, you know, even if it was inadvertent, uh, the risk that, you know, the IRS comes in and tries to assess all these penalties is, is fairly high. And then, you know, you're sitting there trying to defend yourself. You don't want to do that. So if you need any help setting up overseas or you've already set up overseas and you think it might not, uh, have been reported properly. That's what Esquire Group specializes in. We can get you into compliance, keep you in compliance. Uh, visit us on the web, esquiregroup.com, or shoot us an email at info at esquiregroup.com. Peace.